Hi there, I'm Mila Sipka, and this is the Petrus Review. Now in this episode we take a look at a film called Red, White, and Blue. That's a, that's a DVD. I'm not reviewing the DVD, just the film only. And this is a film that was an American-British co-production, directed by Simon Rumley, who also wrote the script, and produced by him and Bob Portal. It also stars Amanda Fuller, Mark Center, John Michael Davis, and Noah Taylor. Now this was actually mostly a film festival release and it premiered on, in the Netherlands in the International Film Festival Rotterdam on the 29th of January 2010, then in the US on the South by Southwest Film Festival on the 16th of March 2010, and then in the Boston Underground Film Festival on the 27th of March 2010, then in Canada at the Fantasia International Film Festival on the 21st of July 2010, then it had a limited release in the US on the 8th of October 2010, then it has the British debut on the 13th of November 2010, the Leeds International Film Festival. Then it had a limited release in the UK on the 30th of September 2011. And then it had DV Blu-ray premiere in the UK on the 10th of October 2011. Now, one of those indie flicks that makes made the rage with the horror indie crowd when it came out, this shot on digital video piece of full born nastiness, is exactly the kind of thing that gives the horror genre a bad name with the moralists out there, who point to films like this when they claim that horror movies are bad for society. I know that many horror fans will naturally flock to a film like Red, Wine, and Blue for its disturbing visuals and nasty violence. I thought this isn't a gore fest, so gore hounds will not be satisfied with this, despite some of the violent acts being really brutal, but left almost entirely off screen with only brief depictions of blood to show what's going on. But if you stop to think about the de details of the plot, then you will see just how you will find just how deficit of the soul this movie really has. The film is about a young woman named Erica, who, after being abused by her mother's boyfriend shortly after turning four years old, has been spending her adult life picking up random men every night from bars and nightclubs and having sex with them. She rejects the men if they even mention about condoms and never sleeps with the same man twice. The reality is that her promiscuous nature is purely as a method of revenge, as Erica is effectively on a one woman mission, and by which she's HIV positive to infect as many men with HIV as she possibly can. This chick is nothing but a monster of the most of the worst kind, and while Amanda Fuller does earn points for portraying this evil character with just the right man of morally deficient self-entitlement to convince Erica, the character is one of the worst I've ever seen. Erica's run of evil comes to an end when one of her victims, a hipster musician with a promising career despite the poor quality of his band's music, and who is donating blood to his cancer-stricken mother, finds out that he has contracted HIV for her, and manages to track her down. After his mother discovers that her son's blood is contaminated, she decides to take her own life to spare her son's agony, which prompts her son to stab Erica to death, and then has his friends help him dismember the body and store the pieces in their homes. But Erica's friend, a former Iraq war veteran, an expert interrogator used by the CIA for the toughest nuts to crack, discovers Erica's death and unloads his brutal training on the band, and in one case a band member's entire family. Red, White and Blue is a film that has its fair share of fans. I do acknowledge that the film's brutality and some good intensive performances will gain the attention of horror aficionados and the Indian crowd, but I'm somewhat glad this nasty movie is slipped for the horror fan cracks, since, this, since there's an evil heart at the core of this thing. The number one rule of any horror movie is to have a character that the audience can place a sympathy on so the horror is effective since you feel for the character and don't want them to get hurt. This film doesn't do that. In fact, there are no characters here that elicit any sort of sympathy whatsoever. Everybody in the film makes the wrong choice here. From the musician's mother who takes her own life, to the interrogator friend who, and I'm not making this up, actually asks a victim's young daughter whether she wants to live without her parents or to die with them. Yes, yeah, that special kind of sick movie that people like Mary Whitehouse or Fred Knoll used to tear the horror genre and you asshole it doesn't deserve. I hated this film. The only positives I can say is that director Simon Rumley keeps some details unseen, we, we don't see what happens to the young girl, and the cast do some good acting, in particular Noah Taylor as the interrogator. If I saw this guy coming at me in the dark, I'll keep my minimum to safe distance. Who is just the kind of boss that you literally don't want to be near your family at all. But otherwise Rumley writes a nasty script that has no morality in it, not even having the decency to leave children unhurt, and employs a slow burn pace of undemanding camera setups that look highly amateurish and thus highly uninteresting to look at. Special mention for the musical score that is also amateurish, using an unsettling, for the wrong reasons, tone-deaf piano score that makes people think it's being skillful, 
I mean, it's just a mind of fluke that sounds scary when any music expert would see the musician as a failure. Technically speaking, this is one of the ugliest films I've ever seen. So as such, Red Wine and Blue scrapes the bottom of the Patrick's Reviews grading ladder with a D-1 out of 10. This is one of the worst, most morally bankrupt films I've ever seen, with the entire cast being unsympathetic to an extreme degree, and the way the story unfolds is just plain garbage. I'm glad that this movie is still, still somewhat obscure. I mean, if you like this film, I'm not going to knock you for it, but me personally, I see it just, it's a film that has no heart. It, it breaks all the horror movie rules of sympathy and morality, and it's just, just nasty. I mean, horror genre, this is the kind of film that's, like I said, this is the kind of film that uh, there's more or less out there claim that's uh, the reason why the horror genre is evil or wrong for society or whatever. This is like the post millennial I spit on your grave films. That, that kind of movie. Now, the film has for good nudity. The film uses the tell me, tell me, but don't show me, show me approach to the kills. Instead of showing Erica being dismembered, it just shows the remains tied up in garbage bags and the kills are implied without being explicitly gory. A couple of boobs shown, but nothing worth looking over. Okay, have you enjoyed that? Now, I do not do requests, but if you have any questions about DVDs or one of our particular films in my collection, just hit me up in the comment section and I'll answer. I hope you guys are staying safe, and that's it for this episode. See ya.